Wrinkles, saggy bits, resilience, radicalism, and uncompromising moments are wrapped in the stories of 41 Canadian women who agreed to write a few words for Sherry Graydon, one of Canada's fine female writers. Graydon is a feminist, a bit of a futurist, and women's advocate, author, and editor, who new edited collection is called I Feel Great About My Hands. It is my pleasure to welcome Sherry Graydon back to Studio 4 to tell us more. I know you feel great about your hands, but the headline said in the Globe, <coughs> not so much about my legs. I think that was Shelley Freilich's admission, not mine. Oh, it was Shelley's <laughs> yes. admission. Okay, so she was going there. Yes. But we are women who talk about our appendages for whatever reason. Well, in fact, women don't, I mean, my riff on the hands was kind of a joke in response to mm -hmm. Nora Ephron's, I feel bad about my neck. Mm -hmm and her lamentation on aging, which was very funny. I enjoyed it immensely. Yes. Nevertheless, for me, kind of fed into all of the messages that we're inundated with as women about it being all over mm -hmm. once you hit 50. And I, I really wanted to do something that would challenge those messages and say, yeah, our bodies may fall apart, but in fact, there are all sorts of things about aging that are beneficial. Sure, and I always think of Gilda Radner, it's always something. Uh, you don't have to feel bad about your neck because you didn't get the turkey neck. But some of us did. <laughs> well, and, and it but, may just be a matter of time. Well, exactly. Well, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. What I know is, is that we all age in different ways and different parts, and some people sag and some people don't. And, you know, it just is what it is. But that invisibility thing for some females mm -hmm. is a tough one. I think it's especially hard if you were celebrated and acknowledged for being really mm -hmm. beautiful in your youth. And if you didn't experience that, the invisibility part is not as difficult. And I remember um, when I was researching um, In Your Face, The Culture of Beauty and You, the book that I wrote about beauty for teens, mm -hmm. coming across a quote from a famous actress, and I forget who it was, but she, she said, you know, when you're beautiful, it's like being rich, being born rich, and then getting progressively poorer. And right. so I think for women who are celebrated for their intelligence or their career or their contributions in other ways, mm -hmm. it's not as difficult. The women Helen Gurley Brown called mouse burgers. Mouse burgers? <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you weren't uh, all that beautiful, but you had a great brain and, you know, great personality, or maybe you're a little plump, all, all of that. Uh. Uh, and I, I have no idea because I wasn't ever drop dead gorgeous, so who knows? Right. You know, so you develop more of a personality, or maybe you don't, because don't we all know the women who have uh, beautiful everything, and they're smart and nice and all of that. Sometimes well, it happens. So it goes. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How did you convince these women to do this, and what were the parameters? The parameters were uh, 2,500 words. Uh, I wanted it to be upbeat and uplifting, so they could mention wrinkles and gray hair, but mm -hmm. the end of the day, what I was looking for were affirming celebratory stories, uh, personal reflections, and it wasn't actually difficult to convince women. What I found was when I started emailing them, um, almost every woman said, I would like to read that book. When is it coming out? Mm -hmm. um, some of them did not contribute, and sometimes that was a function of simply not being a very optimistic celebratory personality. <laughs> right. Uh, sometimes it was a function of personal health issues and let's face it, it's harder to mm -hmm. celebrate the benefits of maturity when you're experiencing the physical decline side of aging. Sure. I think Mary Walsh, the <laughs> comedian, the great uh, comic actress, said, uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, aging is not for the faint of heart. It's a nightmare. <laughs> Pretty much. Her piece in the book is splittingly funny. Um, splittingly she, funny. She talks about uh, her internal thermostat getting stuck up there on cremate, <laughs> which I really related to. And then she says, uh, I'm, I'm hot and loud now, more of a Caribbean carnival than an actual human being. <laughs> and she is. Yes. She's marvelous. But she, she started it, I think, with, I'm an aging crumpet on the slippery slope side of 55. Right. And my friend, who's a little older, I think she's in her uh, mid-70s, said, who said 55 was know. old? <laughs> That's not old. I was speaking to a woman in Victoria a week or two ago, and she was saying to me, um, when I said the title of the book is I Feel Great About My Hands and Other Unexpected Joys of Aging, she said, Sherry, what do you know about aging? Oh, because that. she's in her 80s. Mm -hmm. And so 52 is a long way off. 
Yes, from, Lillian Zimmerman wrote in here, and she's 80-ish. Yeah, 80-ish, yes, yes, she's over 80. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What did you learn from all uh, of the essays and the poems about the joys of aging? So, so much. I have to say every piece resonated with me mm. in different ways. Uh, humor is clearly a desirable trait as you're advancing into years, being yes. able to laugh at you know, the undeniable effects. Um, but the perspective, I think, that comes with years of being on the planet, the ability to sort of look at things from a distance or in, in a more detached yes. way, to not be so emotionally caught up in um, sort of minor details, mm. to be able to have a big picture, long range perspective. Well, Elizabeth May, mm. uh, Green Party, which mm. you know, uh, she pointed that out in hers. Uh, she, she's gone from uh, feisty to respectable, mm -hmm. in that there was a day when they thought young radical, a little off the plank, right. Uh, loudmouth female, whatever they thought, right. and now she gets respect, more respect yes. for her views yes, and her passion. I, I think that is one of the things, you know, given that our culture still really does place so much emphasis on women's appearance, mm -hmm. um, it's hard as a young woman, either you fit the stereotype or you don't, and if you don't, they notice that. And as you age, then there's less emphasis on your physical appearance because, you know, what comes to yes. the fore is the trail of accomplishments mm -hmm. or, or the insight and analysis and perspective that you have as somebody with experience sure. who can speak to whatever it is you're speaking to. Uh, Marlena Gale. Is this reporter Marlena Gale? Yeah. Former, former news columnist, reporter? At, columnist? The, at the province. And, yeah. Okay, because her line was great. She said, drooping breasts led me to a truck driving life or of something adventure. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. truck driving life of, <laughs> of adventure. adventure. What did she mean by that? Well, she tells a very funny story about um, uh, discovering as she approached 50 that uh, she wasn't happy with her body and so she undergoes this sort of Oprah experience where she goes and gets refitted for a bra, which makes a huge difference apparently. Mm -hmm. But the more radical transformation is the career transformation where she and her partner have now become a couple, truck driving couple. And so that's what they do is they have this massive rig and she's a little person, Marlena, mm -hmm. but they take turns driving the truck and that's what she's doing. Wow. Yeah. And so she had to go to truck driving school. She, and so she tells the story of going to truck driving school, and it's also very funny. I know. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of humor in here. Lots and, of humor. and there's some pathos, of course, as always, some survivors. How did you categorize uh, the women? I, I don't mean categorize the women, I mean the sections of the book. Well, they really. There's advocates, there's. So, celebrating, advocating, honoring, uh, seeing, appearing. I, I, mm. I grouped them into those sections and they, it, they really made it easy for me to do that. There were themes throughout that sure. emerged. I mean, I didn't assign categories, I just said, write me something, 2,500 words, right. celebrating aging, and that's and, what I got uh, back. And what I got was smart women don't get over-invested in their breasts. That was my line, mm. yes. <laughs> that <laughs> and, was your line. And I think, you know, probably all of us at this stage know mm -hmm. I have half a dozen friends who have lost breasts to breast cancer. Yes. And so for me, you know, the fact that I'm a little bit vain about my hands is, is an asset because hands are not so vulnerable to disease. Right. Uh, Kim Cottrell's coming tomorrow from Sex in the City. She, as you know, played Samantha Jones, yes. uh, the siren of Sex in the City, and she is in a new, a new movie which she is very uh, anxious to explore and, and promote. It's called Meeting Monica Velour, and she plays an, an aging porn queen. I've seen reviews of the mm -hmm. movie, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'll be really interesting because she's, as you know, a great actor. Not not just known for sex in the city. Uh, we'll come back with Sherry Graydon. Uh, she will be speaking at the Vancouver Public Library May 18th at 7 p.m. Yes, tonight. That's tonight. Mm -hmm. And not just me. Oh, not just you. No, oh, no, some there'll of the be women. half a dozen other of the authors who will be reading from their pieces. Oh, how great. Yeah. Oh, how great. We'll come back.